Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike O'Neill. I'm the chairman of the board of Citigroup. Joining me on the stage is Mike Corbett, CEO of Citigroup. On behalf of the rest of the board of directors, we're very pleased to welcome you to the 2014 annual meeting of stockholders. St. Louis and its sister cities are home to a large employee population and home to a meaningful population of city stockholders in the US. We thank you all for your hospitality and are glad to see so many new faces at our meeting. Our CEO, Mike Corbett, will now give a presentation on the state of city. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thanks to all my fellow shareholders who've joined us here today. Three years ago, we committed to holding half of our annual meetings in locations other than New York, where we have significant operations. St. Louis, the headquarters of our US mortgage business is, with 4,000 of our people working here, one of our most important sites in this country. This business undoubtedly has been through a tough time. Slowing refinancing activity has adversely impacted the mortgage sector nationwide, and we've not been immune to it. Yet I'm also proud that since the crisis, our employees have helped over a million people stay in their homes. And they continue to work tirelessly to make the dream of home ownership possible for millions of Americans. City is committed to St. Louis, and we're investing in St. Louis. Last month, we launched Pathways to Progress, a three-year, $50 million commitment designed to jumpstart the career readiness of 100,000 low-income youth. St. Louis is one of 10 target cities. The program will help local kids set educational and career goals, develop the necessary skills for a 21st century economy, and contribute to the future economic competitiveness of our cities and our country. When I spoke to you last year, I laid out three broad goals for our company. First, I said I want City to generate consistent quality earnings. Second, that I want City to be known for making smart decisions in every aspect of our work. And third, I concluded that I won't be satisfied until City has completely rebuilt our credibility with all of our stakeholders. Let me recap for you our progress in 2013 towards achieving those goals and lay out the agenda I've set for 2014 and beyond. But before I do that, I want to address the topic that I'm sure is foremost on your minds and mine above all, the Federal Reserve's objection to our 2014 capital plan. Obviously, the Fed's decision was deeply disappointing. We believed we'd proposed a moderate and appropriate level of capital return to you, a level that our balance sheet could easily sustain without impacting the safety and soundness of our firm. City remains one of the best capitalized financial institutions in the industry, a fact which the Fed's own numbers reaffirmed. To reiterate, on a quantitative basis, City passed the Fed's severely adverse stress scenario with a capital ratio of 6.5% well above most of our peers and one and a half percentage points above the Fed's own threshold. Yet our regulators found qualitative issues in our process that warrant further attention. It's clear that cities being held to the highest possible standard, a standard which I am determined we will meet. And remember that the capital that we requested to return to you hasn't gone anywhere. It remains our intention to return it to you in the, future, in the future. Based on our conversations with the Federal Reserve, we don't believe their objection was owing to an issue with our business model, our strategy, or our capability to generate capital. We're continuing consulting closely with the Fed to identify exactly where they believe our procedures fell short so that we can fix the problems that have been identified. And rather than resubmitting our capital plan this year, we've decided to focus our energies on addressing those issues in, prepare, in preparation for our 2015 capital plan. This will require investment in new talent, the acceleration of spending on certain systems, and change the way we build, validate, and test our scenarios. While not insignificant, we believe the required investments can be funded through our productivity initiatives consistent with other investments 
we've made and continue to make in our safety and soundness, including risk management, compliance, and anti-money laundering. As Mike mentioned, we've also named Gene McQuaid, who was previously head of our primary banking subsidiary, to lead the CCAR process through next year. I want, and our shareholders deserve, an industrial strength, permanent solution that paves the way for sustainable capital return over time. And achieving that will be my highest priority for the remainder of 2014. Now let me turn to, the, to our performance last year. We earned $13.7 billion, our largest profit since the financial crisis. With most developing economies growing well below the levels that used to be taken for granted, and many emerging economies slowing considerably from their recent peaks, this result demonstrates our franchise and the talent of our people to perform even in a persistently challenging environment. We were able to grow our revenues in the face of regulatory, legal, and other headwinds. We managed our risk carefully throughout a volatile year, with markets on edge owing to the Fed's announcement that it will, would begin to wind down its quantitative easing program. And particularly in a tough environment, uh, particularly in a tough revenue environment, expenses, which are largely under our control, are viewed as the proxy for management effectiveness. And I'm pleased that we hit our commitment in 2013 and realized $900 million in fiscal savings from our repositioning actions. We grew our overall loan portfolio in Citicorp by 6%. And in particular, we met and exceeded a commitment made in 2011 to lend $24 billion to U.S. small business over three years. With 9.1 billion of that lent in 2013, which was more than double the 2009 level, we brought the total to $26.6 billion to enable small business to start and expand operations, to add jobs, and to turn their passions into progress. Also, we were proud to be recognized as America's top affordable housing lender. With nearly $2.7 billion committed to affordable housing projects. We also made good progress on several legacy issues. We resolved significant mortgage litigation, utilized $2.5 billion of our deferred tax assets, and reduced city holdings by a further 25% and cut in half its annual loss. These numbers helped, I believe, show the capability of this franchise to generate capital. And during, during 2013, we generated more than $20 billion of regulatory capital, ending the year with our Tier 1 common ratio at an estimated 10.6% on a Basel III basis, 60 basis points above the goal we set for ourselves at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, our supplementary leverage ratio stood at 5.4%. I told you last year, that execution of our strategy would be my primary focus. In 2013, we put in place key tools to help us achieve the most from our franchise. We created a detailed, tough, but realistic set of scorecards to judge the performance of more than 500 of our firm's top leaders. We sorted our 101 countries into four categories to help prioritize the commitment of our resources to those sectors and regions most important to our clients. And we exited the consumer sector in five markets, including Turkey and Romania, that didn't fit our strategy and didn't generate adequate returns. We've shown that we can generate quality earnings, but 2013 also surprised us with a, a damaging example of how ethical failures can jeopardize everything we work for. We discovered that invoices that were paid through an accounts receivable financing program in Mexico were falsified, which ended up resulting in a $235 million reduction to our 2013 net income. While we've completed a rapid review of similar lending programs, we continue to investigate what took place in Mexico, and we're working to identify any areas 
where we need to strengthen our controls through stronger oversight or improved process, and we're pursuing every possible avenue to recover these funds and punish the guilty, inside and outside the firm. One person's already been terminated, and I expect that others will be disciplined as well, either for actions or, just as importantly, inactions that helped enable this fraud. And I want you to know that I've made crystal clear to all of our employees that I expect the very highest standards from each and every one of them. We're launching a comprehensive program, including improved training and a continued focus on responsible finance to support and enhance the institutional values that have served this company so well for more than 200 years. I know that Citi's culture is robust and that the overwhelming majority of our people know right from wrong and strive to do the right thing every day in all aspects of their work. But I also know that it takes just one person, one person to jeopardize our credibility. We'll be making new investments in our controls and compliance functions, both to prevent any such losses in the future and to further bolster our firm's safety and soundness. Looking ahead, we're off to a solid start in 2014. The company earned $4.1 billion in the first quarter of this year with loans and deposits growth in our core businesses. And I think this is further evidence that we can indeed generate quality earnings even in a challenging environment. During the first quarter, our institutional business performed well across our products and our geographies. Our consumer bank again posted growth internationally, generating positive operating leverage year on year. In the US, lower mortgage refinancing activity continued to impact the retail banking business, while retail services strengthened year over year, showing the positive impact of the Best Buy portfolio acquisition. We continue to optimize our branch network, reduce our real estate footprint, and simplify our product offerings. And since the fourth quarter of 2012, we've reduced our headcount by about 12,000 people, including 3,000 in the first quarter of 2014 alone. This helped lower our expenses by more than a quarter billion dollars year on year. We've already resolved a major legacy issue this year, a litigation surrounding residential mortgage-backed securities, and aim to put our remaining financial crisis-era legal overhang behind us. With city holdings comprising now only 6% of our balance sheet, our focus has shifted from selling assets to reducing the drag that the remaining portfolio causes on our earnings. We expect to reduce the loss incurred in city holdings further this year, putting us closer to break-even, and the loss of just $292 million in the first quarter, first quarter is significantly down both year over year and quarter over quarter. And as we know, every dollar saved, of course, falls directly to the bottom line. The narrower loss in city holdings helped us drive continued progress with our deferred tax asset, which we've stated as one of our key priorities. And after reducing these by $2.5 billion in 2013, we reduced them by an additional $1.1 billion during the first quarter. In our core businesses, work proceeds to integrate and streamline our products and services to ensure that we provide a seamless experience across our offerings and regions. A monumental effort is underway to transform our consumer business from what is today too much of an amalgamation of 35 local banks into one truly global bank. We're consolidating platforms, processes, and products, all with the goal of giving our customers a consistently remarkable experience wherever they live, work, travel, and across all of our product lines. The Institutional Clients Group, Aligning and integrating our legacy markets businesses and our investor services and direct custody and clearing activities will allow us to deliver a more comprehensive set of capabilities as well as enable to prioritize our resources more efficiently, particularly around operations and technology. City is uniquely positioned to become the industry-leading industry integrated services platform as the business moves to adjust more demanding capital, leverage, and counterparty risk requirements.
We'll continue to invest in our treasury and trade solutions business, the backbone of our network, while we capitalize our focus on the payment side. This business is capital friendly and not easy for our competitors to replicate. It took us decades to build and remains the clear global industry leader. In particular, we're working to improve our digital presence. Last year, we launched tablet and smartphone versions of our two most successful platforms, City Velocity and City Direct BE, so that today, traders and treasurers alike can do business from anywhere with a wireless connection. Combined with smart branch banking services and other innovations in our consumer bank, we've established the core around which we can fulfill our aspiration to become the world's digital bank. To accomplish all this, we must build on what we've put in place last year and take execution to the next level. We'll focus on building the right client base, those institutions and consumers who best fit our business model and for whom we can create the most value. We'll streamline and rationalize our systems and processes, striking the right balance between efficiency boosting standardization and the flexibility and empowerment necessary for our people to serve our clients. And we'll look to save time and money by consolidating our operations in every city and country where we come to work, minimizing costly fragmentation. Over the last six quarters, we've already achieved about $2.8 billion in annualized savings in our core businesses through repositioning actions, simplifying and streamlining our organizations and improving our productivity. Approximately 40% of those savings have been reinvested in regulatory control and compliance initiatives. Another 40% fund higher volume related expenses to cover the cost of inflation and to fund investments, including the Best Buy portfolio acquisition. The remaining 20% has fallen to the bottom line. Over the last several years, we focused our franchise, created the tools for execution, and worked hard to restore our credibility. We still have more work to do, but the foundation for the future success has been built. We've accomplished a great deal and more than enough to begin to show what this franchise can do at its best. Thank you very much. Hmm.